here in Washington, D.C. at the Information Technology Industry Council's uh, The Intercept Tech and Policy Summit, and I'm joined by uh, U.S. National Cyber Director Harry Coker. Thank you so much for the time, sir. I'm jealous because you're wearing Air Force or Jordans, and I'm not, right? I didn't get the memo, <laughs> uh, but I definitely appreciate you skating on over here, especially after uh, that remarkable opening uh, opening that you did out here at the summit. Thank you. My pleasure yeah. to join you. So thank yeah. you for the opportunity. I know you haven't, it, it, you weren't on stage long, right? But during your mingling at, in the morning here, did you learn anything, anything new um, that, you know, this summit is doing? And, and obviously it's the second time it's been around. I would imagine it's going to be around three, uh, another year. Yes. But anything new that you've learned so far? Well, I was encouraged talking to some of the in attendees that they, um, they understand that cybersecurity yeah. is a key component of national security. And that is encouraging coming from the private sector. Uh, that they're partners that we must have in order to make the nation secure. Mm -hmm. Un unlike when I was growing up, uh, they weren't putting on uniforms uh, uh, on private sector entities. They weren't on the front lines. But today, uh, with cyber security, they are on the front lines, much like our uh, state and local tribal and territorial governments. Yeah. They're all, we're all on the front line. Yeah, yeah. Well, the agency's only been around two years, right? I mean, it was established by Congress, and, and here you are the second uh, a director now. What's the biggest thing you learned? I know you haven't been on a job long, but what's the biggest thing you've learned? And listen, you, your background says that you're perfect for this position, right. and here you are now taking over, but biggest thing you've learned so far in the short period you've been on? Well, I, I have been on now just about seven weeks. Yeah. And uh, Congress created the office in 2021, uh, a great move by Congress. <laughs> Oftentimes we don't give Congress credit. Yeah. They, they nailed it. Yeah. Uh, they realized the importance of bringing uh, coherence to the, the federal uh, cybersecurity enterprise. Uh, we've had for a number of years, a number of great federal entities doing superb work. Uh, but this office, the Office of National Cyber uh, Security uh, Director, yeah. well, was implemented to bring us all together, uh, unity of effort, if you will. You talked about my background, uh, military, mm -hmm. and we're, we're raised uh, recognizing the strength of teams. And, that, and that's what I've, I've learned and seen and thrived in in the seven weeks I've been in the position. Yeah. What's it like? The seven weeks you've been there, right? But it, do you feel pressure? Because cybersecurity is a major thing. We'll get into that in a, in a minute. Mm -hmm. I know it was, you know, the infrastructure is at risk, and I know you preached that. I watched your Good. testifying on, on the, uh, at the select uh, committee hearing yes. uh, in January, and, you know, brilliant uh, hearing that that was. Learned a lot. Um, but what, do you feel any pressure? Because that's a lot on your back, yeah. strategy and policy-wise. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's, there is pressure, um, and I kind of like pressure. Yeah. It, it, it uh, allows us to focus, uh, and we'll have successes, but we will not become complacent. Yeah. And that's what the pressure does. It keeps us on our toes. Um, and, and it's a good kind of pressure. Some, some folks, some entities are not built for pressure. Uh, our office is. Uh, I am. And so that's the type of environment that we thrive in. It's pressure because we know how important it is yeah. and that people are counting on us. So uh, we, we welcome that. Uh, just similarly, uh, we welcome transparency and accountability. You know, we'll talk about what we're doing, what we have to do, the hard problems. Um, and that's so others know of the challenges and they know what we're saying we're gonna do and they can hold us accountable for that. Absolutely. Well, listen, on that on that very hearing, you know, you opened up and, and it was a line that caught me. Uh, and you said, I quote, the American public needs to be aware of the threat to our critical infrastructure, yes. right? Yes. Uh, you mentioned Volt Typhoon. You mentioned, you know, explaining why people should know what that is. Yes. I was educated when I heard that, but you were very serious when you said the American people needs to, it's reached that point. Yeah. What do they need to know specifically? Yeah, and, and I'm glad you said uh, that I preached it uh, because that, I got to deliver the message yeah. uh, to everyone. What the, the public needs to know is that uh, there's unacceptable risk to our critical infrastructure, that we are at risk right now. And that's one of the reasons our office has been here uh, to focus on those challenges. Uh, something else that the public needs to know, and I, and I talked about the National Cybersecurity Strategy having two major shifts. There's recognition that individuals are, are going up against bad actors in whatever form, uh, nation states mm -hmm. or malicious actors of some other sort. And we, we recognize that there are others that are better suited 
to bear that, some people call it burden of cybersecurity, I call it a responsibility uh, of cybersecurity. The federal government has a responsibility to protect our citizens, our residents uh, on that front. High tech industries, key components of the private sector have a responsibility uh, to, to protect uh, those who are less capable, individuals, schools, young folks, uh, hospitals, we've seen them all um, uh, yield to some vulnerability. So we're, we're counting the, the first big shift is having those that are most capable of handling that responsibility do it. Yeah, you, you said critical infrastructure. Uh, what infrastructure? I mean, and, and I want you to break it down. I, mm -hmm. I believe I know what it is. You yep. correct me if I'm wrong, right? Yep. There's the power grids, yep. uh, things that we did, the, the water control, yep. right? Yep. Uh, all of the things that we may take for granted. I take the train into New York all the time. I take New yep. Jersey Transit. I'm looking at all that yep. space. I says, what stops someone from getting to this thing at night yep. and just blowing it up? Yep. And yep. and what would that, that would just basically derail the entire rail system. Yep. And the New Jersey, New York area, what a catastrophe that would be. Yes. You need to give yourself more credit because you nailed the critical infrastructure sectors. Um, there's 16 or so, and, and you hit uh, energy and yeah. transportation, um, facilities, IT, communications. Healthcare. We, healthcare, and we can go on and on. Yeah. Uh, you, you nailed it. Uh, and they're called critical infrastructure because if they were disrupted, it would be a, a massive impact to the way of life that we have become accustomed to, and, and you nailed it again when you said that we have taken for granted. Uh, typically, we don't recognize how important these things are until they're not working, yeah. uh, because the nation has done uh, a decent job uh, of, of protecting our critical infrastructure. But you know, as, as we led into this, we are at unacceptable risk right now. Yeah, I have a 10 year old and, and I'm nervous. Uh, I haven't gotten her phone yet, mm. but you know, I, I see reports all the time. You talk about AI and companies training these robots to even talk to children and play with children. Is there a cybersecurity risk within that? And, and if so, what do people need to know about protecting their children from that type of risk? Because they're not going anywhere. My, yep. my daughter is online. She's mm -hmm. in this digital world. She's going to be there. Yep. But while she's there, like in a playground, mm -hmm. you want to make sure she's safe. Yep. Well, I'm glad uh, you got a two year jump start on the. Uh, Although I, my wife and I uh, raised uh, two daughters, they're adults yeah. now, but I do have an eight-year-old granddaughter, so I'll be following you and seeing how you <laughs> how you handle it with your. I'll be calling you, asking yeah. for advice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, we can turn back to that that shift again. We should not rely on children to have to protect themselves online. That's the responsibility of the private sector, those social media companies, yeah. uh, the governments, and and parents as well, but th that's a big shift. Taking it away from your 10-year-old daughter, my eight-year-old granddaughter, and shifting that responsibility to entities that are more capable of it. In this case, um, social media companies, high-tech companies, parents, um, and grandparents. Mm -hmm. So it, it's that's what it's all about, that first big shift. Yeah. I mentioned it before, but for those people who may not know, and I'm sure people may not, because listen, everybody has lives, right? Yeah, Social media, we're, we're yes. all... Volt Typhoon, why should people be scared when they hear that freeze? Yep. Well, and that was one of the great things about that uh, that uh, hearing last week. And one of the, the major purposes was to make the public aware. Uh, folks in the business have been aware of uh, the threats to our critical infrastructure, but we need the American public to understand uh, that we're at risk and that some of the, the measures that need to be taken are, are done uh, to protect the American public and, and critical infrastructure. It's it's um, it's easy, and again, I have to go back to what you said, to take things for granted. Um, it's it's not safe, it's just not prudent to think that things will always be there when we need them. Yeah. Our adversaries are plotting uh, to, to, as I said to, uh, earlier today, to disrupt, in some cases, military mobilization. Um, so that's what the public needs to know. Yeah. Volt Typhoon, does it have the ability? I mean, we've been warned about it, I know, for a few years now. That we haven't seen, I guess, what could be, but does that spyware, that you know, malicious software, does that have the ability to cripple us if we don't take it seriously? Well, um, we are taking it seriously now, and, and one of the great things about that hearing is uh, uh, Director Ray of the uh, FBI talked about uh, that morning, uh, a takedown of Volt Typhoon. So we, we've made tremendous progress 
on mitigating that risk. Again, back to pressure and complacency. We're not going to be complacent. Uh, we will have successes and we'll continue to have some, but um, adversaries aren't backing away. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's that's part of what the public needs to know. Yeah. Here again with the uh, National Cyber Director, Harry Corker, and uh, at the ITI uh, Tech and, and Policy Summit event, the Intersect. Um, take me back to when you were growing up, right? After the military, did you always know that cyber would be the direction? And I want to piggyback off of that because there's a lot of misnomers about even getting yeah. into the cyber space. And I know we want to talk about the workforce in a little bit because that's a very interesting mm -hmm. stat. Uh, but did you always know you wanted to do this? No, I did not. Um, uh, growing up, my father was in the Navy as well. So we grew up at submarine bases across the country. Uh, and I was always decent at math. Um, and I was kind of funneled into a, a math, science, uh, academic uh, program. Yeah. Um, but back then, it wasn't called, well, frankly, we didn't have computers back then when I was growing up. I think it was uh, uh, slide rules. <laughs> um, then we got to calculators. Um, but it's been called different things. But by the time I went to the Naval Academy, uh, there was information assurance, which is essentially the same thing, different name. Yeah. And I didn't realize that that's what I wanted to do, but I like hard problems. And I, I could see that uh, the world was going digital. And I, um, I was able to go to graduate school and, and earn a master's in computer science. And that was further illumination uh, to me of uh, the importance of what we called computer sec or information insurance and now cybersecurity. Uh, and it's, it's uh, fascinating. It's a digital world, yeah, and um, we're all involved in it. And the other point, you ask how I, I got into it, uh, so I didn't always realize it, uh, but also back then there was a misnomer in that you needed to be uh, a technologist yeah. uh, to get into cybersecurity. Um, that's, that's inaccurate. Uh, we need creative thinkers. We need uh, persistent folks. We need people who care, uh, and then you, you can you can make contributions. So you don't have to be good at math then? Because I'm not good at math. Yeah. Words and English, I love that, but not yeah. as good as math. If somebody's not good at math, they can still enter the field. Yeah, but you've already sold yourself short a couple of times. They <laughs> probably are good at math. But you do not have to be a mathematician. Or a STEM is great, uh, but there are plenty of people making uh, contributions in cybersecurity that don't have a STEM background. Yeah, well, let's talk about that, right? Yeah. Because uh, we were talking about misnomerous 500,000 jobs and, and maybe more by the end of this year yep. that are available uh, in the department, right? Yep. Um, I called my aunt because I know she's looking for a career change. And I said, mm -hmm. hey, did you know that cyber? You... And she was fascinated by the information. But I heard you say that you went to a Baltimore community college uh, to, to kind of preach this mm -hmm. on that hearing, you know, you, you also mentioned it to the, to the Congresswoman and you said, whatever we were doing, it's not working. Um, how do you get more people? And because it's black history Month, specifically black people to yeah. get into the space, because again, I don't think they even know that that position is open. Yeah. 500,000 jobs are open for you to apply, get training, yep. right? Learn and then take that skill set and, and go off. And, and it doesn't look like the investment in the cyber world is going any. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, a point that, that has to be addressed um, with regards to the black community and any underserved community. I'll just give you a personal example on, on how we reach those communities. I am a mentor at a uh, middle school in Baltimore um, every Tuesday evening when my knee is okay. And um, you know, I, I expose those children to the impact that they can make. And I also let them know you don't have to be the best math student in your class to do it. But it, it really is exposure um, to the opportunities to, to make a good living, uh, but also to, to make a contribution to society. And oftentimes we overlook children's desire to make an impact. Uh, they care about things, need to find the right things, and then position them to be able to make a contribution. So I give you that anecdote, but it's making folks aware of the challenges and the opportunities and the contributions that they can make. Yeah. Um, we typically haven't taken, taken enough risk on people. Uh, we, one of the points we talked about was uh, uh, having uh, college degree requirements for some of the cybersecurity jobs. You don't need them. Bingo, uh, there you go again, uh, you don't need them. And folks need to know that. Um, it's, it's the learning and the opportunity to develop. And, and that's where we come in. 
yeah. we can find people and we need to do a better job of finding people, but let's develop them. Yeah. As you said on that Aaron, diversity is all about achieve to it. It's all about achieving positive mission, you know, outcomes. Yeah. And I guess filling in 500,000 jobs, yeah. making sure that it's diverse is a positive outcome. Yeah. Um, there are talent pools that we have not looked at. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a country boy. I, I got lucky when a Naval Academy recruiter came to my small rural Kansas town. Um, there are urban communities across this country that, that probably don't have people coming in talking about cybersecurity education. That's one of the other great things about this uh, office. Um, we, we have a national cyber workforce and education strategy that talks exactly to the point that you brought up. Yeah. You know, getting to places that we haven't gone to before, taking risks on people, putting in the time to develop them, and, and turning them loose. Um, I just don't encounter many people, old, young, or in the middle, who, who don't aspire to, to make a contribution. Absolutely. And to better themselves and their family. And cybersecurity is a, a heck of a place to jump in. Yeah. Speaking of diversity, jump gets you right here, right? Black History Month, we're, we're sitting here in yeah. February. Um, anybody stand out, maybe from the tech field, as far as admirers that you've had, you know, African Americans that made a contribution, and not the notables. We yeah. always talk about the notables. Does anyone stand out? Well, and, and I'm glad you said not the notables because that's my answer. Um, you know, my family members and your family members, regular people who have gone through the trials and tribulations, but haven't been in the history books mm -hmm. individually. Uh, certainly their experiences are there, but, but I love regular people who have their head down and are getting it done without the benefit of notoriety and celebrity and in many, many cases, um, monetary compensation. But uh, they do more than persist, they thrive. And so I'm not at all avoid, avoiding naming a name, but we call them unsung heroes. Uh, they're heroes and they're sung to me. Uh, again, seven weeks into your position, um, I, I'm surprised you still yeah, one that said it. I was even on the congressional uh, hill. I'm looking, I'm watching, and I'm thinking, why did you take this job? Yeah. Like they're they're grilling you. I mean, it, it, it's it's a bipartisan yeah. role. It seems like it was created by Congress. Yes. Um, do you feel like you were sitting there? Are you feeling the pressure at all getting grilled by both Democrats or Republicans, or, or is it a part? It's um, it's worth it. Yeah, uh, the opportunity uh, to to contribute to, to our great nation uh, really is. And, and I'll also be frank, it, it comes with the territory. Um, when, when folks are offered positions like this, it's made clear that the, uh, the confirmation process is gonna be thorough and it's not gonna be enjoyable yeah. uh, until you're through it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was accurate for me. Now, in hindsight, uh, those experiences when in the moment might not have been uh, pleasant, uh, they were worth it. And uh, I'm glad I went through it. But I, I can also add that uh, cybersecurity is a, a, as bipartisan issue as there will be. Absolutely. You know, the hearing we had uh, last week was uh, my most recent experience in, in seeing that firsthand, the bipartisan nature of uh, cybersecurity. Why? Because it's a threat to all of us. Doesn't matter you know, what party you're in, where you're from, race, ethnicity, preferences. Cybersecurity touches each and every one of us. Yeah. Listen, it, 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 I don't know if it was cybersecurity related, but I missed two trains because I couldn't get my ticket on my phone. It kept logging me out, telling yeah. me my information was wrong. And I'm thinking like, man, yeah. imagine Volt Typhoon hit and, yeah. and we can't do anything. I mean, it, it would throw us back. A couple more things before I get you out of here. Yep. I don't want the president calling me and <laughs> telling me you're late to a meeting or anything yeah. like that. Um, but, but the first one is it is an election year. Um, again, your position seems like it's protected. Uh, you were around in the last administration and, and yet and still, um, we're going to go to the ups and the downs. Who's it? Who's not? I saw, you know, one official saying, well, what's your, the difference between your job and the next one? And I'm like, you guys created this job, yeah, but, yeah. um, does an election year and does it in at all change your thinking? I, I, I mean, I don't know if you'll be around in the next administration. I'm assuming you will. Um, but does it change your thinking about how you go about your job or do you put that aside? I, I put it aside. And the reason that it's relatively easy for me to put it aside, I served 20 years in the, the Navy mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, the Navy as all military services should be and, and are to a great extent, it's apolitical. 
does not matter um, who the president is, which party has control of, of Congress. Uh, we have orders and we carry those out. I lost track of the numbers. I, I used to tell folks when they'd ask a question like that, I've served under some number of presidents and I think it was eight uh, and from both parties. And that never at all changed my desire to serve uh, and, and to, to protect the United States. Um, so 20 years in the military, I was apolitical and, I, and that works for me. Um, and so I am, the election year doesn't impact me or my office one way or the other. We, we have a heck of a challenge uh, and, and we want to stand up and, and get it done. Yeah, as you said, working in your office, cyber director, it's, it's like serving your niche because this is Absolutely. another part. People think it's just putting on a uniform. Yeah. That's the physical side. Right. But the information side, which is a, a bigger side now, these is it's, that's probably more critical. A absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned putting on a uniform again. Uh, uh, when I was growing up, you know, the way we served our nation, protected our nation was to put on a uniform. Mm -hmm. And those that didn't, well, their contributions to national security was voting and paying taxes. Yeah. Uh, but now back to where we started out in this conversation, cybersecurity is integral to national security. So those folks that are out there uh, that, that are not in uniform, that they are still contributing to our nation's security based on how they're contributing to cybersecurity. Absolutely. Uh, get you out of here, geopolitics and, and then good to great um, on that very, in that committee here, and you, you said the goal, uh, and this is for other countries, specifically China, the goal is to supplant the U.S. We are in a competition with China, and frankly, they're the only nation that has the means to reshape the international order, meaning diplomatic, economic, military, we are in a competition. We have to acknowledge it and not lose sight of it. What part of cyber plays, what part does cyber play in this competition? Well, uh, that the point of that hearing was to talk about the cybersecurity threat mm -hmm. to our nation's critical infrastructure. So that hearing was all about cybersecurity and uh, our nation's security. Um, the, the key point that uh, Director Ray talked to was Volt Typhoon. Uh, that takedown was a result of the work of our cybersecurity enterprise across the, the federal and the uh, private sector landscape. Um, so it's integral. Yeah. Well, hopefully we win the competition. You know, we, we, we yeah. need to be first at, at, yeah. at this uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good to great time. And, and I'll get you out of here on this, right? Force be okay. We have a great community here on the Force platform. And I know they love leadership stuff. Uh, and you know, Jim Collins wrote a, a great book called good, good to great. And you being a phenomenal collaborator, cause you have to, you gotta play yeah. both sides, a yeah. political, yeah. um, what's the difference between a, a good collaborator and a great, the partnership needs to be equal. Uh, oftentimes we'll call somebody a partner and, and, uh, and they're given, uh, this much and we're only given that much. It needs to be it needs to be equal. And then I'll also add on that, that uh, nobody should be keeping track of how much somebody's given, but it still needs to be equal. Um, so you can take a, a, a partnership and rel personal relationship or a professional relationship, but it, it really is, needs to be a true partnership, it needs to be equal, um, need to have empathy and look at it from the other partner's perspective. Uh, oftentimes, you know, we'll, we'll look at it from our perspective and say, you know, that's wrong or that's not right, but, you know, step over there. Yeah. And when we look at things from a different perspective, we typically have better understanding. Yeah. Equality. Again, on a yeah. bonus yeah. question though, yeah. so springtime is coming up, right? Yeah. Any books that you would, leadership books that you've read that you could pass on, maybe you read in military school while you were out in the middle of the ocean or, yeah. or when you were in the military, I should say, not school. Um, any books, leadership books that you could recommend someone read this spring? Well, you know, the type of leadership that I'm focused on right now is, is related to cybersecurity. And, uh, I, I've been reading, uh, actually listening to, sorry, <laughs> um, one that's been out a number of years and it's the fifth domain and, and the fifth I, I, domain. Yes. And, and I, I recommend folks, uh, give that some, uh, some time. Um, it's, it's all about cybersecurity and the importance to our nation and frankly to the world. Uh, it's, it's a good overview of cybersecurity. Yeah. 
Appreciate the time. Uh, Director Coker here at the uh, Information Technology Industry Council's uh, policy uh, on tech. And listen, I want to learn more, so hopefully you can come back. If they have it again third year, I'll, yep. I'll be there. Yep. Um, and so hopefully we'll learn more by that point and the election will be behind us yep. and we can move forward. I, I'd look forward to it. I, I, I've enjoyed our conversation and, uh, and your perspectives. Again, you aren't giving yourself enough credit on a number of points. You know what, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, listen, I like to hear Jordan. So right. then you, I, the information here, Jordan, is all right. All right, all right. Appreciate it. Appreciate right it. There. Coker here at the ITI.